Moses. I'm so excited that we are joining you today to actually talk to you all about a very important topic. Um, our topic today is how to tackle the doubt and fear talk in your life. If this is your very first time ever tuning into the show, I really do appreciate you just taking time out of your busy schedule um, to watch our show today because you could be doing anything. You could be watching all these other Facebook live shows, but you have chose to just join us today. Um, I'm also excited because we have Trayonda Towns as well as Tracy George on the show. So the way that we make this show a lot more interactive and um, entertaining for you all is by posting your questions and your comments in the comment field. Um, if you're watching this from a different page, make sure you come over to Martinique Y. Brown's um, page on Facebook so that I'm able to read your questions and your comments to share them with Tracy and Trayonda. So, like I said, all of our information is in the description box. Um, if you would like to follow us on Facebook as well as our Instagram accounts or just send us an email. Um, if you feel that these coaches really resonate um, with you, then make sure that you reach out to them um, because they do offer a discovery session and you're able to see if they are the right coach um, for you. So thank you ladies for being on the show today. Well, thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. You're welcome. So like I said, remember all of the information of the coaches are in the description box and let us know that you're here today just say hello to us and i'll shout you out as well another thing that we love for you to do is go ahead and share this video now to your page um so ladies if you could just go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers and let them know a little bit more about yourself as well as your area of specialty as a life coach and we'll start with you treyanda well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I know that's the first time I ever did that. You see that? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Well, good evening, everyone. As you see, we have fun as well as um, talk about those things that's most important to us. Uh, my name is Trayanda Towns. Um, I am a life transformational coach. Um, my business is uh, with under the branch of Glory Cloud Enterprises. Um, with the flow, um, life transformation is faithful living out wisdom. Um, life transformation is a life coach. Um, and soon it will be the flow combos on the couch um, where we will be sharing our shows that we do here. We'll be sharing also. So if you miss it here, you'll be able to see it there. I'm excited about that. And so that's where we deal with um, igniting, um, empowering, um, and nurturing um, tragedy into triumph. And so walking those individuals into um, Triumph again. Life doesn't have to end at the end, but it could be a beginning. True, true. Yeah. Thank you, Trayanda. You're welcome. Well, you want me to jump right on in? Jump My right name is in, Tracy George. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tracy George. I am a biblical therapist, and I'm also a life transformational coach. And what we want to do is empower. Uh, our client empower whoever comes to us uh, to get past their personal obstacles mm -hmm. so that they can begin to see change in their lives and their family and also in their business or ministry or whatever it is that mm -hmm. they're trying to um, accomplish. And um, that is just basic us in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I actually um, created this show is so that you as viewers, you can actually get practical advice from um, professional life coaches as well as counselors. And so, like I said, make sure that you go ahead and post your questions and your comments in the comment field. Um, I'm already prepared because I have the questions for the ladies. Uh -oh. and, so, <laughs> and so we're going to go ahead and get started. But like I said, if you have a question, go ahead and um, type that into us and I'll, I'll relay that to um, the coaches. So first question is, why do we actually allow fear and doubt to paralyze us from doing what we want to do. And you could just jump right in. 
Wow. I'm going to be nice and step back twice because I'm always out there. <laughs> I always. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll start it off like this fear is an unpleasant emotion or feeling we have about something or someone. Mm -hmm. And we build up this mindset that it's out to get us mm -hmm. or it's going to take over or whatever the case may be. And so how does it paralyze us? Thoughts can literally uh, transpose you into a place. Uh, as a kid, I was one who imagined very well. Fear takes over the imagination and before you know it, it is reality to you. Mm -hmm. And you believe what you have been thinking. It could be based on something someone said, Yes. something you heard and before you know it you have taken it on as if it is a life force mm -hmm. so strong that you now believe what you have been thinking and fearing mm -hmm. and so that unpleasantness has now taken hold and taken over even with doubt the idea that it may not work out it may not happen a particular way it they're stronger than what we think. And the Bible even tells us words have life. And so when you captivate that or take that in, you take that life into yourself. And now you are believing something that you never seen happen. Mm -hmm. You never um, uh, really took the time to challenge yourself to say, am I really believing something true or did I just generate the truth behind it for myself to believe it was true? Yes, yes. And I'm going to tag off of that, yes, um, as well. Um, just stating that fear is a, in, is a natural, it's a natural response that we are created with, right? Out of... Um, just a, out of to give us that reflex of caution, right? Reaction of um, what's not safe, um, but it goes to these mechanisms keeps us safe. Unfortunately, extreme cases or repeated right. levels, once it's activated, it triggers that freeze response. So when we talk about what keeps paralyzes us and keeps us from reaching our goals or going forth or doing what we want to do, well, this just gets us to the second half of the question because once we get to that point, it's not so much that we don't want to go forth. We've triggered that response that sometimes keeps us from going forth. Um, and due to the lack of the know-how, how to bring it back or process it to get us past the rest of it, um, it places in a place of being stuck. And sometimes just stuck is good. It's a good stuck. And it can also be a bad stuck um, in, you know, in the terms. And so... I you know, I guess an example of that would be um, how to get unstuck would be just being aware of that and acknowledging that that's going on. But with that, that's when the doubt comes in. So, you know, we talk about the, the doubt as well. And so now that you're afraid, you're also doubting yourself because you everything is questionable mm -hmm. of what's to go forth. And so, you know, what is that like? So now you've created that extra level on top of that fear because now you're self-talking yourself. Yeah. And, and that, that, that fear or flight response is activated, which is your natural. But now, like, like Tracy said, you're, you're questioning, you're, you're cautious about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How... Well, before I do this, I would like to give a shout out to Annette Moeller Cook. Uh, she said, hello, Apostle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I actually see that we have a couple more people that joined in. Make sure you guys go ahead and um, share this video now and just let us know that you in the house um, today, our virtual house, that is. Um, <laughs> but go ahead and um, make sure that you share this video so that other individuals can just get this wealth of knowledge. And, you know, we just started, so we are really. Um, we're going to have a really good conversation. But how can people actually become comfortable with being uncomfortable? What do y'all think? 
Well, it goes back to um, just addressing before about the fear. First of all, we have to, you know, just bring ourselves and allow ourselves to be aware of what's happening once we've been triggered and what what triggers us. What does that feel like? Being okay with acknowledging that and learning what that is and recognizing, identifying what the root cause of it. Where does it start? How does it start? Why is it starting? Yeah. Um, and then also being willing to do the work. Right, because of that response, I can speak for myself. Um, when people go through things and tragedy and trauma for itself, and you know that's my special area, you know that uncomfortable is always there. And so that mechanism, you get pretty good at shutting it off and shutting it down mm -hmm. um, because it's uncomfortable. But you know, you you begin to learn those tools of you know, however, and to make options or what would be the best fit to help you deal with that. So, you know, recognizing, identifying the root causes, being okay with the triggers and being willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So what work do you feel that is involved in that? Because I know you were saying um, being willing to do the work. What is this work that you're speaking of? It could be a number of things that best fits you because everything doesn't fit everybody and so we talk about tools and techniques and having a conversation of what your limits are and, and what you're willing to deal with um it, it, it that sometimes that even goes with um, breaking it down in, into pieces smaller steps instead of trying to go all in and handle it all at once yeah right um and being willing to be be committed to the work so not just saying I'm going to do the work or I want to do the work, but are you committed? Are you going to be committed when myself as the coach that you have come in and partnered with and say, hey, um, I need you to help me be accountable to follow through with it. Are you willing to stay committed when you're being put in the spotlight to be accountable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how could... Um, either of you actually help someone um, as a life coach overcome the doubts and fears that actually holds them back um, mm -hmm. from moving forward in their life? I would say that um, tagging on to what Trayonda said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, you got to, in doing the work, you have to acknowledge that it exists. Mm -hmm. If you're still uh, in denial about it, then nothing's going to happen. But when you are honest about this is where I stand and I don't want to be in this place no more, then what's going to happen is you'll be able to start pulling at the root of what it is that brought you to this point in the first place. Because like she said, we have normal fears and normal things that are associated with us being alive, yeah. you know, that keep you from running in the street and, 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 and a car is coming, mm -hmm. you know, but on the other hand, those same things can, you know, I, I stop in this point. Um, I had a injury on my arm and the doctor informed me that it overhealed. What happens with fear, it can, it can be overtelling and, or, uh, uh, the awareness of our fear can be overwhelming to the place where it shows up in ways or in areas that we normally would have been, um, ready to seize the day. And so we have to go back and grab those because I think we all at some point may have, uh, suffered from some, for me, it was stage fright. You know, yeah. when it came to singing, <laughs> you know, I would hit the stage and butterflies and yeah. they would just overtake. But the normal fears or the normal nerves, mm -hmm. you know, they will you work through those. But when it gets to the extreme mm -hmm. to where you are not able to function. Yeah. not able to go out your door and you start dealing with the phobias, then right. you're going to need that help. And, and the first step is acknowledging that I'm in this place mm -hmm. and I need some help. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. And I'm going to be honest with you all. So this is actually um, that this is actually a fear that I struggle with 
sometimes. And um, many of you all know, if you've watched the show before, if you have it, that's okay. You know, I won't hold it against you. First time, everything. Um, but I have a fear sometimes with, um, like, talking to people about their faith in Jesus Christ. And so um, I found myself, because when I was younger, I would pass out tracks and I would have no uh, problems doing it. But as I've gotten older, I realized that I like it was a fear so strong that I didn't want to go to shopping places. I didn't want to go and do things because I was fearful that God would put it on my heart to go talk to somebody. <laughs> so, I'm like, Martin D, come on, get your life together. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, with that fear, and that was a real fear, because I'm like, Martinique, you, you know, Matthew 28 say you're supposed to go out. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I have to be able to overcome this. You cannot mm -hmm. not do things because of the fear that you have within you. Yeah. So I said, well, Martinique, just go to one of the grocery stores and pass out two tracks. And, you know, yeah. and not to say that it's like something that I've totally overcome, but I think sometimes when we challenge ourselves to tackle on that fear and maybe just quantify it by saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this for 10 minutes or I'm going to do or talk to five people, you know, mm -hmm. and that really um, helped me. Like I said, I'm not truly delivered from it, but, you know, I know that so much more because it, it is also a sense of pride. I feel, you know, that I have all the right words rather than me depending solely on the Holy Spirit to give me the words. But that's a whole different show, you know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but can we just talk about those steps again? Because I would like, if a viewer is watching this, I would like them to be able to, you know, just simply write it down like, Okay, and when I say steps, so the question is, what steps can a person or what steps should a person take to tackle the things they want to accomplish but are fearful of some of the process? Well, that goes back. I mean, there's a lot of steps, but the, I, the, main, the main one to get you started, I mean, I'll just start with four is, okay. you know, first of all, you have to address it you know, um, allow yourself to be aware of what's happening um, and, and address it, address the limitations that it may have right. on you. Um, breaking past the shame and the embarrassment of that you are limited due to this fear um, and, and you have a need to work past it. Um, and, and once again, it's a natural thing. I mean, that, that thing can be paralyzing to the point, you know, you can't breathe. And so finding a way to get past that and also um, selecting selecting you know after you have that conversation about what's best uh, what varying technique or tools and options that's available to what and how you want to proceed once you do address and, and find out your limitation and that may that may change later mm -hmm. right some it may you start by simply journal journaling you know writing down a couple of things of you know what does that feel like in my body what begins to happen how can I um, proceed once um, I begin to shake? Do I need to breathe? Do I need to stop and take a moment and drink a glass of water? Um, what actually made me feel that? What word was it? Did I begin to smell anything? You know, all, you know just begin to be aware and, and identify those triggers that may send you there. But also um, being committed. Mm -hmm. right? Not running mm -hmm. from it once it gets uncomfortable, once you begin to identify. So, you know, like I said, journaling is just, just a start. But, you know, there's other techniques that you could do. Some nowadays, some a lot, you, you hear more people doing um, hypnosis more now than ever um, because their trauma and limitations and the fear has been so deep for them, which for us is just another way of mindset. 
you know, as we say, let's change that mindset. Well, that's all you're doing. You're reprogramming your mind and how you're reacting to those things that make you uncomfortable to kind of reprogram that natural balance within our body. And then breaking it all down, breaking it down to smaller steps instead of going in and ch- in chunks and trying to complete it all. Mm-hmm. You know, of course we are busy and, and we want to get back to business. And a lot of times, especially as, as women, um, we have to go in a little bit harder because the demand is so great on us. You know, we're, we're parents, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're, we're CEOs, we're all those things, educators, doctors, nurses, lawyers, all in three hours. Right. Right. <laughs> right? And yeah. so, mm-hmm. you know, breaking it down where it's, it's easy for you to identify and that you can once again partner and be willing to, to be pushed to follow through. Mm-hmm. Tracy, you have any any more you want to offer? I was enjoying the the the. the <laughs> I was right the there. Was going. I was like, yes, honey, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, so I, and I would I would add um, just tagging off of everything the 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 small goals. Yes. A lot of times we bite off more than we can chew, and then we get the doubt that it will work. Mm -hmm. And so when you go back and you really break those things down and if you can't do it yourself, then then get with someone who is Mm -hmm. uh, able to help you through that process, hiring a coach or whatever the case may be, so that you can sit down and see what it looks like Mm -hmm. to break it down even further. Um, Also, those self checks, you know, I tell anybody, keep a notebook by the bedside. You know, yeah. so that when you wake up and you're wondering why and you might be waking up in a sweat, mm-hmm. write that down. Those are bits and pieces that the coach will need to assist you so that they can look at your situation even further mm-hmm. and help you become more aware and able to identify those issues that show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So talk to talk to us about um, the benefits of celebrating your small victories in this oh wow because i I think that is so important yes 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 and it doesn't have to always be with food people yes Um. yes i liken it to when i was in kindergarten and my uh kindergarten teacher miss childs she had a big board with um and a little box of stars and she would let each of us if you you made an uh, uh, successful on one of your papers or uh, you put all the blocks back, she would tell you, go and get a gold star out of the little box and go put it by your name. Mm-hmm. And that sense of, of accomplishment, you know, and, and I've carried that through the years. And, and I tell my kids, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. If it's important to you, yeah. celebrate it. If you accomplished uh, walking an extra block, if you accomplished whatever it is, celebrate it. Yeah. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because since we are talking about tackling your fears um, and your doubts, um, especially with the fears, when you do push through and um, do something that you are fearful of, you know, you need to celebrate that. And yeah. I think it's also important to share that with someone that you have possibly shared that fear with so they can celebrate with you. Because mm-hmm. um, I know that sometimes I might seem like to people that watch my videos overexcited. And I just feel that you know, when somebody shares something with you, you don't want no dead person to be like, oh, that's good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, like the old, that's like the old LOL where the person is not even laughing and they type in LOL. No, I need, I need you to fake the funk. Like when I tell you something, I need you to act excited. You right, know? right, right, right. So, 
Yeah. And so you need those, especially that support system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people that's going to celebrate with you. And if you don't have nobody, go ahead and celebrate yourself. Because yeah, you right. know how hard it was for you to push through something. Push through. Yeah. So, um, ladies, did you have anything to say about that, um, Trayanda, about the um, celebrating your small victories? I, just I, 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 no, I totally agree with you, right? You know, you want to be celebrated. You want to, and that's part of breaking the fear and, and decreasing the, the, the self doubt, right? By celebrating, celebrating those small victories right, and, right. And, and decreasing the negative talk with the positive mm -hmm. actions and a positive talk and all those things. Like you say, it, it could be something small, you know, hey, I can have that extra scoop of ice cream, you know, hey, you know, but it also is allowing yourself to see how you're learning to release the control. It's good. But sometimes we just have to just let it go and surrender. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and allow the greater one within us to stand up and rise up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and stand in its rightful place within us. And, mm. and nurture us back into that wholeness, right? right. Because after a while, it's, it becomes crippling. You, you, mm. You're losing out. Yes. You know, you're losing out. Um, and that's that's really good. And Annette, I have a question for you. Um, Annette is not the coach. Annette is a viewer. So <laughs> Annette, um, were you asking a question because it says, is it necessary to have a person to be accountable to for small goals. Is that a question? If you can just write yes or no um, for me. But I, I really do believe that you have to look at the small steps before you get to this grand goal that you've accomplished because yeah. you have to do things daily right. um, in order to achieve the goal at hand. So yeah. I, I think that I'm going to just use losing weight for an example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people sneeze at losing two pounds. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, before you get to 10 pounds, you got to get the two. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. You know? And so it's those small things that you are accomplishing along the way that mm -hmm. can help you to look back and say, man, I'm telling you, this was all worth it. And it's going to be worth it, y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll be here to celebrate with us. If you watch this video like maybe a month later, and you be like, guess what I did, y'all? And mm -hmm. I'll share it with them. I'll tell them what you did. Yeah. Um, so what resources, techniques, or daily mantras do you recommend a person uses to actually push through their fears? Mm. What do y'all think? And viewers, you can also let me know what resources, techniques, or mantras do you actually use to help you to push through your fear? Through they, your can be, they can be small, going off of, you know, what I mentioned before, as far as like start with journaling, writing them down, those small victories, those big challenges, um, those possibilities of steps that you could take. Um, and, and a lot of time, it doesn't have to be hard work. It can be natural um comfortable work where you're learning to appreciate yourself for where you are accepting your truth and where you are right and 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 we talked about triggers so identifying as well where is that fear showing up in your body because we could do all day here but then at the same time when it's crippling us you know within our body so finding a way um yo well yoga stretching getting with a group that motivates you yeah, it's okay sometimes to do it by yourself, but it sometimes is even a little better when you have someone say, come on, you can give me one more. Right. Like, yeah. oh, I can't do it. I know I that's <laughs> right. <laughs> when you by yourself, you like, you like, look, girl. You got one more in you. I was like, oh, no, I don't. And I started hyperventilating. He's like, come on out of that. <laughs> come on out of that. All right, come on. <laughs> but, you know, and I got home and I was like, you know, and I'm feeling the score, and I was like, but I did it. I felt yeah. so good that I did do it because I would just stop. The fear was saying, stop right now. If you mm -hmm. don't stop, it's going to get so bad. Mm -hmm. And it, it did, but it didn't get so bad. It got yeah. bad, but not so yeah. bad. <laughs> uh -huh. um, 
and, and, and being okay with that and yeah. not allowing that sense of failure that can trail behind that and say you failed because you didn't do that one more push up mm-hmm. or you didn't last a little longer on that plank. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it'll show, but you know, and, and you appreciate that one pound, you know, when you only did that half a pound, you was like, okay. But then you put on them two pounds because you, was eight, you know, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. You're not afraid and you're not no longer ashamed. And just right. think, being grateful, just simple grateful in your journal. What are you grateful for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, are you grateful for that, that, that last step? Um, yeah. Talking it out. Yeah. If a counselor is not enough and you go a little deeper to we talk about finding the root cause, maybe you need um, or would like to try a professional therapist. Mm-hmm. right to go a little deeper maybe there's something more there because we're not mm-hmm. born with fear babies are not born with fear at all small children are not born with fear at all they'll put their hand in a dog's mouth and reach on that stove in a minute it's us in a oh, minute don't that. oh don't yes go there. yes oh, oh don't yes. talk to the stranger yes right yes we're conditioned yes. to be afraid that's so, right you know personal um contact or experiences or just community stuff society stuff you know tv radio all that it programs us those to feel a certain way Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so and and go ahead go ahead um, to tag right right off of her you know i remember being in basic training and Mm -hmm. fear showed up all the time oh Uh, goodness you know, don't do that. I'm not going over there. And the drill sergeant is barking, uh, get in line, <laughs> march, you're going. So um, sometimes you need somebody else's voice. I love what she said about, you know, sometimes you need more than just you. You know, joining a group, whether it's a group to simply encourage you overall, or even joining a group that deals with the particular fear. You know, maybe you want to jump out of planes. And so you turn around and they have a group that is preparing you. You might not do it by yourself. (laughs) You go first. (laughs) (laughs) And they have those that will tie you to themselves and jump with you. So you don't have to, you know, my father jumped out of planes and I told him you did that for the family. Yeah. So you covered us all. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So Annette actually um, responded, and she was um, asking if if it was necessary to have a person accountable um, to you. You know, when you're conquering your fears, what do y'all think about that? It depends. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish. If, if you can push through on your own and deal with all the, the circumstances surrounding it, then go for it. You don't have to wait because what happens if that person is not available? That's good. Mm-hmm. So you have that to consider. And then if you are that person who needs to have some people in your life, then that's something you can, you can, I mean, it's, it's based on the person, mm-hmm. you know, and, and what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And where you are at that, at that moment. Exactly. You are, you know, there may be times you, you're okay. And yeah. there may be times where you look back where you've come from, or you look forward to where you go, you're going and you're saying, I need a little bit more, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right now but it's not necessary or mandatory mm-hmm. yeah maybe a little bit recommended yes yeah yeah. And I, yeah yeah and I, and I think that that's good that you you let the viewers know that it's not recommended especially because those people that are your accountability partners in that area what are you going to do when they're not available 
And so um, I do think it's necessary to try it on your own first. And like you guys were saying before, be honest with yourself to determine, okay, I need somebody else, Mm -hmm. you know, um, to help me with this. Um, But when you guys were actually talking about, and and Annette, let me know if we answered your question. It's okay to be honest. If you be like, no, y'all just totally missed the point. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I do think that it's so good to challenge yourself towards that fear because then you're able to really see what you're made of. Yeah. especially when you conquer that fear or even when you like let's say that you decided to write five steps out that it was going to take in order to um overcome that fear if you yeah. push through that second fear or that third fear and you like i can do i can do more and yeah. you can really see that i feel like our resilience and our um, our strength is so much stronger But sometimes we do have to become uncomfortable to Mm. recognize and know that we can do so much more um, Mm. with that. So can you um, can you all talk to us about what does self-doubt actually sound like? Because I know when I have that self-doubt, when I hear it, it sounds just like my voice. It don't sound like nobody else's voice. And Mm -hmm. that's the crazy thing. It's our actual Mm -hmm. voice. Right. Well, before I address that, just going back to what you just said, there's a um, a quote that says, don't let fear or insecurity stop you from trying new things. Mm-hmm. Believe in yourself, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind to others, even if you don't like them or yeah. what you're doing. And a lot of times, you're not going to like people when you're doing something and you feel uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? In that moment, you like, just go away don't ask me you know don't no I'm not giving you like I said you know when it was like come on give me one more my arms and legs was burning Mm. you know I'm sweating (laughs) you one more are you still you know I barely could walk you know and so you don't right you know Stacey London put it that way you know don't let fear or insecurity keep you from from that so you know yeah and we yeah. just want to give a shout out to Johnny. Johnny Cruz Craig is in the house. Um, she hey, actually Johnny Cruz. Johnny Cruz. That's a that's a good that's a cool name, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. Um, but Johnny actually said we must confront the fear to conquer it. We can't yeah. heal what we don't reveal. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, and she and and that responded. She said yes. I understood that answer. Thank you, Annette. I'm glad. Yeah, it's really glad. <laughs> um, so let me ask you all this. Can you tell me about a time when you were overcome with fear and or doubt? And how did you guys actually overcome it? We get in real person. Okay. Well, I can start from my childhood. Um, I went through um, verbal and physical abuse by some of my family members. I started out as a ham. You know, if there was a stage, I wanted to be on it. Mm -hmm. By the time that uh, month and a half in the summer took place, I was about eight. By the time I returned home in Florida, I was a different kid. Mm -hmm. And somewhere fear showed up. And teachers that would normally say, so what are you going to do this year? I was a little hesitant. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that the hesitancy was opening the door for fear Mm -hmm. and doubt to crawl in. Mm -hmm. I'd love to say that it immediately went away, but it didn't. And I was in my 20s still Still. battling. And it, it opened that door for depression, for fear, for doubt, so that I second guessed everything. And I would have to sit with my mother and she would try to talk me through it. But it became a pattern and it showed up in my schoolwork. Mm -hmm. I would go to classes and I would literally fear, even after studying, Mm -hmm. I would fear taking the test, fear uh, going for a job, already telling myself I'm not qualified for the job. And I kept going at that until finally Uh, My mother and I had a conversation and she said, you got to do what you need to do to put an end to this 
or it's going to overtake your life. And so for me, it started with the conversations. It started with admitting where it came from. But eventually I had to sit down with my godmother, who was also a professional therapist, Mm -hmm. so that I could come and empty everything out all the way back to where it began. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we share with people and tell them uh, you need to do what you have to do to get beyond what this fear or uh, self-doubt is, uh, some of us have been through it. Mm -hmm. And so it took uh, me sitting with her for a few hours and emptying out. And I would like to say it all left that day, but it didn't. But it began the process of healing for me that allowed me to see what the triggers are and what the uh, how they play a role in my life and how I could um, deal with them so that I didn't push them onto my children. And so that was important to me. Yeah. Um, what about you, Trayanda? Well, I've had many, but my greatest uh, moment of overcoming um, that challenge was when I, at the first onset, of when I first, the newness and freshness of when I lost my daughter. Um, I was a parent young. Um, I was, I had to be independent young, even before parenting um, became part of my life. And so um, I was pretty independent, you know, traveled well on my own, you know, pretty organized, took care of things. But that really challenged and broke my trust factor to the point that it was shattered. And so going out into open spaces and going out to pub into public, I felt so vulnerable. I felt exposed. I felt weak. I felt violated. I felt, I mean, you talk about paralyzing fear um, that was uncomfortable. Um, I will get outside just going to do the normal mommy errand thing, you know, just take a walk, um, go to the grocery store or something like that and be stuck. That fear will paralyze me so much that, I mean, you, the world is spinning and, and confusion came in. So, you know, um, I had, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm calling and at the time, um, her siblings were was a sophomore in high school. You know, I'm calling my fifteen sister, and I'm like, and just crying. I'm like, I need you to come get me. Mm-hmm. She's like, What do you mean, mom? I said, I, I'm stuck. I don't know where I'm going. She's like, Mom, you just left the door. I said, I know. Yeah. You know, and she said, Backtrack from where you came, and I could not move. Right, you know, and, and nothing had changed outside. It was the same traffic, the same walkway, but I was stuck in that same path, so discombobulated, so mm-hmm. terrified of my surroundings because my trust had been shattered and fear had consumed me. Wow. And that went on for about two or three years. It's like I did what I needed to do to make sure everybody was safe. But anything that had to go on outside of the household did not happen until after school hours. If it was during the school year so that she could be with me. And if it was during the summer, she planned everything to, to, to just be with me. Mm-hmm. And um, that was a total breakdown from my character because once again, I was always independent always strong and then it, it feeds the, the self-doubt all the time and so learning how to take small steps with that mm-hmm. right but also once again pretending that I'm strong right yeah. holding on to it until it was shutting down my body you know my legs wouldn't mm-hmm. work for me mm-hmm. you know um, I couldn't walk right you know I wasn't sleeping um and so in, in, in my borders was very small. And, and once I did begin to be a little bit independent because now she needed her life, she needed her freedom. You know, she's in high school, she's preparing her thing. Um, I found it myself, part of my healing was getting out into the crowd. So serving others, right? 
the word says love conquers all let that love heal you and bring healing and so I went out into the community to find those answers and to serve but it was healing for me Mm -hmm. Um, even though my goal was to be a part of the solution um, of what has caused our young people to be so hopeless Um, but it, it took small steps so I couldn't immediately travel from my starting point it took little by little so over time you know I went a little further and Mm -hmm. a little further a Mm -hmm. little further you know Mm -hmm. till I felt a little comfortable and even at times where I thought I was comfortable when I would just sit back and breathe yeah and 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 pay attention to what my body was actually saying I would be so tense yeah like I'm walking my this would be so tight Mm -hmm. and I'm rubbing like trigger points and like soothing myself and I'm like clenching my jaws you know and I'm thinking I'm okay Mm -hmm. but so that goes back to listening to that body listening to those triggers and identifying and finding ways to help you cope Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good amazing so we actually have a question on the floor it comes from Nikita and she asks Why is self-doubt easy for some to get over and harder for others? What do y'all think? Well, I I think you brought that up before. And I think one of the biggest challenges with that, um, and it goes hand in hand as to what we were saying about how, you know, how we process, you know, um, overcoming our greatest fear, um, that replay replaying that replaying that scenario over and over and over again that causes us to feel short of our worth and our value and how you know um and this slowly wedges the negativity you know and gives us that perception of our of ourselves a little bit deeper each time it replays um and it, and it creates that that basket right so depending on what it is and then we go back to that insecurity that it brings, we start comparing ourselves to others around us and how well they accomplished it and how, oh, they're doing okay. That happened to them. Even though they had similar experiences, that wasn't, your experience is not their experience. Mm -hmm. And so that also creates that basket um, and utilizes the negative, it creates that negative versus the positive examples about improvements or alternative resources once we do that mm-hmm. we don't leave room for that once we start comparing ourselves to others Definitely. and the tag right off of what she said I wrote down the word comparing because it happens a lot we compare the issue and mm-hmm. we compare the outcome of how they overcame mm-hmm. we don't take in consideration the filter how we were mm-hmm. raised Uh where we were Uh raised, the school we attended, our environment. We don't take Uh all that in. And some of the other things, uh, self-abuses or abuses from others that may play into Uh uh, what you're dealing with so that your self-doubt may have a group of of, of folks that have spoken into that that helped you build that up even more than uh, somebody who might have just spoken over themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of that, you know, takes into consideration because there were some things that I feared that I could get over because it was just me. But the things that were dealt with because of what I heard people say and I began to agree with them, it played into that and it took longer a period of time for me to deal with that mm-hmm. yeah and and i'm glad that you brought up um your upbringing you mm-hmm. know because when we're a child if we're constantly hearing something yeah. uh, we're going to automatically believe that and so exactly um, with self-doubt it's <laughs> what we will have to begin to do is retrain ourselves yeah. And so now that you are an adult, um, yes, I be, I've always believed in um, like self improvement books as well mm-hmm. as um, sermons that talk about who Jesus Christ and who He created 
us to be. And so when you have a better understanding of um, your creator and mm -hmm. who he created you to be, then that's why is uh, the Bible talks about um, a transformation of your mind because you have to now begin to feed yourself who God has told you you are as well as there's books out there that can begin to help you reprogram yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I might see Trayanda. I'm like, I thought Trayanda said she was afraid to do such and such. I thought she doubted herself in this area. But a lot of times we don't see that back work that mm -hmm. somebody has done to now get themselves to that point where they don't dwell on that negativity that their mm -hmm. mind has told them. They say, okay, right. I'm going to sit in this for one hour and I know I can do it. So yeah. I'm just going to the remainder of these 23 hours, I'm going to do it, you know? And so that's why you have to begin to reprogram yourself in knowing that I can do this and feed yourself the proper things yes. in mm -hmm. order to begin believing it. Cause you have, it's about belief as well. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Um, and then you have to have also like a sense of I don't care. Like I know I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna get this done. Right, right, right. Um, and you and I I'm sorry, um, viewers, for this, but um if we can go back to the question about um can you talk to the viewers about what self self doubt actually sounds like? What would y'all say to that? Uh, it 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 sounds like uh, something that you want to do, but then you tag a negative statement right alongside it. You know, I really want to go to school, but. Mm -hmm. And then it mm -hmm. the fill in the blank is based on you. I don't I don't have what it takes. I'm I'm not smart enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Um, uh, an amazing opportunity pops up on your job and folks are telling you, you ought to go for it. You, you're the right person for the job and you start out, you even go get the application, yeah. but then you turn right around and rip the application up or you leave it on your desk and you say, you know what, I'm going to fill this out, but I don't know, yeah. you know, they overlooked me the last time or you know, they want someone with this and I don't really have that. And, you know, and before you know it, you start, you, you, you hit yourself one side with the positive and then you come back with a negative TKO and then you yep. start it up again. And before you know it, you got a little boxing match going right. by yourself. By yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All by yourself. Yeah. 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 And, and I, and I agree. It's, it's just those little ways and words that you talk yourself out of what you intend to do mm -hmm. yeah. so going back to what we what we said earlier about changing your mindset being intentional about that so you know you're going for something and say well you know maybe I won't have the right words to say but you can do it like for me, I'm one that's like, I'm always preparing and always preparing because I don't want to leave anything out and I don't want anyone mm -hmm. to feel me once I'm finished. Yes, but yes. then I talk myself out of it as soon as it's time to serve all that beautiful and wonderful dessert that I've just put together mm -hmm. because there may be something wrong or, ah. you know, Maybe this person is not going to like it, or mm -hmm. maybe yeah. you could have added that, yeah. or, you know, maybe that sounds a little bit too much. It doesn't mm. have to be that, or maybe that's too simple, or, mm -hmm. you know, all those little things, and then you're back down to sitting there starting all over again, or not starting at all that's good mm, that's mm. so true and that, yes. that has been and that has been me and it's still me at times mm -hmm. yes you know, um just yes. wanting to get it right and it goes back to you know past experiences from a child right mm -hmm. always want you know looking for that validation when you're mm -hmm. receiving information that 
you're not good enough or you're never going to be good enough or you're not anything or, you know, and so, you know, you, you grow, you know, you grow up into adults if it's not addressed younger, ready to go out and, and, and right. meet the world and, and conquer and accomplish great things, yet you feel that you're not worthy of that. Mm-hmm. No matter how mm-hmm. much you prepare for it, right? You know, you're you you're not good enough. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. And and we actually had uh, we have a new coach. Her name is Johnny Cruz. So Johnny actually <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny actually said um, to that question of what does self doubt sound like? She said, "It sounds like a naysayer. It sounds like negative connotation." It yeah. sounds like a loud roar overpowering the still small voice. Mm-hmm. It sounds like doom. That's good, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Where you at? We gonna get you, girl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and the other thing that I I, I believe really is um, like a pinnacle to our self doubt mm-hmm. is I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. Look, oh, your, I'm good at that one. Yes. Mm. Your, your tomorrow better start today because yeah. before you know it, it's going to be next month and mm. it's going to be next year yeah. and mm-hmm. you'll never um, do it. So you really have to be mindful of these um, things that you say to yourself that really just hold you back, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, just be, just ask for discernment to yeah. realize when it is something that is holding you back from accomplishing something that you want to do. Because like mm-hmm. I said, it sounds like your voice. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so another question. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about this quote? It says, mm. fears are created by the imagination to make reality seem scarier than it is. Mm-hmm. When you take action and face your fears, they become weaker. You realize that reality isn't nearly as bad as your imagination. What do y'all think about that? And let me know if I need to read it again. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I guess it goes back to... Um, it used to be really popular for people to repeat that quote. But Les Brown will always say about fear is is false evidence appearing real. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. And so I, it goes back to speaking to the imagination, right? Those false things, those self doubts, those imaginable things that could possibly go wrong or is wrong that keep us from being our best selves or reaching our our intended goal. And it becomes our reality. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true. I would tag right on lo- along with it. As children, you know, uh, Trayonda said earlier, we are unstoppable. Mm-hmm. You know, I have, a, a, as soon as she said it, I remembered my son who kept mm-hmm. pointing at the nice little candle. Yeah. that had this nice little flame and he kept yeah. doing his he kept doing his hand like this and danced his way over <laughs> took his pacifier out of his mouth and just looked at me and I said don't touch don't it, you do it. <laughs> and he looked at me and he leaned over and he looked at it and he looked at me and I said okay you're getting ready to find something out and so the next thing I know and my son wasn't a crier he would whine you know or low moan and he went and he just lightly touched and then he drew his hand back fast and he looked at me and then he started walking and put his head on my lap and I said he said owie and so his imagination was ex- was unstoppable until something showed up to stop it. Mm-hmm. And so fear is like that pauser that makes you go into the other direction. You're still imagining, mm-hmm. but now what you're doing is adding fear. So mm-hmm. what if I drive to New York and mm-hmm. I get in an accident on the way? Mm-hmm. What if I t- fly on the plane? And the plane drops out the sky. Mm-hmm. And so, so we're still imagining, 
Yeah. But we have now brought this thing in and the Bible tells us he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. So we well, even get a little touched with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so starting something new, you know, I find that the the nerves are still there, the bubble still happen, yeah. but do we still uh, imagine beyond that and push through That's you good. know we have to remember that you know if we're not careful we'll stop and use that same stopper in every aspect of our life it could be something that's simple as she was saying earlier as baking something and knowing you're good at what you do but then there's a new group of people yeah, that is getting ready to experience. If it's family, you ain't even worried about it. They <laughs> know you. But if it's a new group and you've never cooked for them before, and now you're thinking, did I add too much salt? Mm-hmm. Was it a pinch or did I put a whole tablespoon? Was it sugar that I did? Did I open the right jar? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are times you might be walking uh, to your car and say, did I shut the door? Mm-hmm. Did I lock it? I didn't lock it. And you go back through your process because that stopper showed up. And in your imagination, I didn't do anything I was supposed to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's that's, that's, that's really good. And um, I, I just really appreciate um, this conversation because I know that so many times um, we allow things that has not ever even happened to us to stop us from doing something new, to yeah. stop us from um, continuing to be great or yeah. to become great, yeah. you know? And I just uh, I just hope that this conversation is, um, just brings some freedom um, to you all that's watching the show. And I hope that it also helps you to um, learn different skill sets that you can begin to incorporate in your life so that um, you can just push through um, those fears and that self-doubt that you may also have. So my last question on the table is, how can having a relationship with Jesus Christ help a person when they feel overtaken with fear and doubt? Well, I would jump right in and say, the Bible said he sent the word to heal and to deliver. Yeah. And what I find is that it's calming mm-hmm. and, a, and, and fear has a way of causing an unsettling to occur. So being able to open up the Bible and simply uh, read uh, to calm your nerves, to calm those issues, to remind yourself that he didn't give us the spirit of fear, to remind <laughs> yourself that he gave us power love and a sound mind remind yourself of those promises remind yourself encourage yourself with his words that in itself will begin to you know because that was one of the things that helped me Mm -hmm. um when it was insurmountable and I thought I will never get past this Mm -hmm. the father started teaching me about uh, tranquility and, and, and peace that passes all understanding. And sometimes I had to put something on the shelf yeah. until I dealt with those issues first yeah. so that I'm not sitting there about to pass out because of what I'm uh, faced with. And to redirect my thoughts, he told us to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, was fearless Mm -hmm. and he knew the ultimate goal of why he was here. Mm-hmm. And he continued to pursue and even at times bring in different ones with him if it was nothing more than to pray. Knowing how to ask someone, please pray for me. You know, whether they're there or, or like the centurion, you don't have to go to my house. Just speak the word, you know, and I tell people all the time when they say, uh, woman of God, that was an amazing word. I say, keep me lifted up. Mm-hmm. Because I knew fear was one of those issues I've I've had and that will show its head every now and then. So I tell people, uh, don't think me uh, more than human. Mm -hmm. Pray for me. If my name shows up, Mm 
Uh-huh. If the Lord shows you my face, pray for me. Pray my for me. mother, yeah. yes, my yeah. mother is still alive and well, and we still have prayer together. Uh, my kids and I will have prayer together. Prayer, I tell you, is one of those resources and tools that I will tell someone, don't go without. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. yeah. That's good. Well, I'm with you. I can't add any more because you you said my sister <laughs> all hey, the flow is it was created around around that second Timothy yeah. one seven, right? He mm. doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, and 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 that brings healing because when you go through things, that's the first thing that's your comeback. That's the residue out of going through yes those experiences or those life changing whether it's losing a job right. or you know losing a home or having to change a job yes. all yes. those things right and so yes it comes up but once again he lives in me is greater than he lives in the world and so you know you you need that to remind you of who you are and, and what is mm-hmm. great and even in my going through all i had to hold oh, was on. the promises and yes. I'm not talking about no material promises. I'm not yes. talking about no tangible promises, but the promises that was written that's written in that word about the yes. peace, about the joy, about the hope, about the healing, yes, yes, right? about keeping my mind. He is a keeper, mm. you know. When those <laughs> days I sat in that chair from the moment I get the children off until they came back, and I had to put it on again. But sitting in that chair and just you know imagining if I just just stay right there and just slip on in. I will be all right. But that wasn't what God's purpose was. What mm-hmm. happened was not of him. And so in knowing that he comes to bring us life and bring it more abundantly, right? Yes. Not, not what the evil in the torment, you know, that comes, but that that's not his wish. His, his, his power is to bring us past that. Yes. To strengthen us to move on and to, to, to walk in that and walk beyond and among those. And so, hey, there is something greater. He is with us and he is great no matter what it feels like and what it looks like if we just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) It's good. It's good. And the thing the thing is also when you do um when you do push through your fear, you when you do push through that self-doubt, you know, know who the one who has given you that um that power and that strength. And you know, just everybody likes to be appreciated. So just thank God. Just say, God, you know what? I know you the one that helped me through this. Cause I know there's plenty of times where I'm like, Jesus, I know it was all you right there. Cause I know you there. (laughs) It has taught me what those breakout moments at the sink was all about. Grandma Uh, said you washing that dish and (laughs) and I just break out in that song and I have that moment yes. And yes. because I remember and I talk about it all the time my sound has ceased mm-hmm. right and if we really realize we're all a melody in his ear yes. about, well, when we go ahead and play it's going to be the choir no that choir is us now the life that we live and the faith and the love that we have is the sound that's going to create that melody that yes. atmosphere that he's hearing so sometimes when you're going through that thing just has to leak a little bit <laughs> it just to leak and you yes. just go on in you're not worried yes. about what it sounds like because mm. he has kept that sound and I can say mm-hmm. and what has kept me is even worshiping just in the midst of the worst circumstance that's good mm-hmm. I am so grateful today that he has given me healing and peace that I hear that sound definitely yes. Yes. well ladies this has been such a great um, discussion and I this just want to thank you Trayonda and you Tracy oh, um, just you. for taking time thank you. Um, for just sharing um, your knowledge on this topic make sure that you visit our Facebook pages as well as our Instagram account and if you truly enjoy the shows that I produce Go ahead and go over to my GoFundMe page and you can just make a donation of any amount, um, a financial gift rather. So I hope you all have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everybody.
Thank you.